Welcome to On The Move. I'm Dave Larwood. I'm here tonight with Stella Cade from the San Francisco Bay Area Polio Survivors, uh, a wonderful group. Stella's a, quite an amazing woman, had polio at an early age, and has really done a lot of great work with the local uh, polio community. I had polio in 1945. I was five years old. Uh, I was uh, sh taken by ambulance down to a hospital in New Orleans. State of Louisiana put all their polio uh, cases in that one hospital, Charity, in New Orleans. Uh, I did my acute phase there, which was two weeks, and then my rehabilitative phase there. And then later in Dallas, Texas, at uh, the Scottish Rite Hospital, I had a series of surgeries. I was uh, a, an inhabitant of that hospital until the age of 16. Wow, that's, uh, that's tough. After you were 16, you entered a phase where you were much healthier. Uh, not necessarily. It's just that they followed you until you were 16. And after that, uh, you were on your own. Was the polio much of an impact for you when you were raising your kids? There were things I couldn't do, but I did everything that I could. Great. Um, now, at some point, pretty much everybody who has polio gets post-polio syndrome. Tell me about how that affected you. Uh, the numbers are between 40 and 60 percent actually get the post-polio syndrome. Um, it affected me in that uh, muscle pain, joint pain, uh, atrophying muscles. I lost the muscles in both legs. I uh, have problems sleeping. I have breathing difficulties. I have to be very careful with uh, anesthesia when I have surgery. It started about 30 years after the original case of polio. This would be 1975, okay. the first symptoms. And then it was some number of years before you got involved with the Bay Area polio survivors. Well, the first polio support groups uh, started forming in 81, about 80, 81. So at that time, I was overseas. And uh, when I came back stateside, I joined a group as quickly as I could. And was that the San Francisco group? Yes. So tell me a little bit about them. Oh, they're a marvelous group. And they're very diversified, uh, a lot of terrific people there. We uh, do a newsletter nine months out of the year. We have meetings at two sites in uh, San Francisco and in Martinez uh, twice t a month, and that would be nine times out of the year. We uh, have had conferences in 2000 and 2003, and we're now planning our third conference. We have a very large polio memorabilia collection. In fact, it's even larger than the one at the Smithsonian. So tell me a little bit about the a little bit about the memorabilia and, and these conferences. I know you have some wonderful posters uh, where you display some a, a lot of fabulous information about polio. Um, tell me about famous people who have had polio. Alan Alda is one. Dinah Shore, uh, Mia Farah. Of course, FDR. FDR, of course. We have had some famous uh, Olympic gold medalists that have had polio that have recovered. So let's talk a little bit more about the disease. I mean, obviously it kills some people and some people don't even know. Can you tell me about what the sort of range of impact is on individuals? You start exhibiting flu-like symptoms uh, and it may not go any further than that. If it does, uh, then it goes in the paralytic phase, which means arms and legs don't move. You've got a very stiff neck. Uh, your respiratory system is seriously affected. And those are the ones that will be uh, quarantined. They will be taken from the home and during the acute phase, they will be uh, isolated. The home will be quarantined. The family, the husband will not be allowed to go to work. The brothers and sisters cannot leave. Your toys will be burned, uh, your clothing, everything that, that you Touched, loved. Will, will, yes, loved and touched will be uh, taken away. Uh, people will visit from the medical community, but you're not allowed to leave. Back then, we didn't have the sewer systems that we have now. There were quite often large cities had open sewers, and uh, it could easily be contaminated. Uh, they didn't know until the early 50s where polio came from. They didn't isolate the virus. Uh, but then Salk came up with the, with the killed 
No, it wasn't killed. It was a partially killed virus. No, Salk was a dead virus. Uh, okay, sorry, Sabin was a partially. Okay, yes. so Salk had the dead virus. Yes. And uh, that was pretty effective. Yes, that was 1955. That's when I got it. <laughs> Actually, I got polio um, in uh, September of 1955 because I was overseas with my father, who was a medical missionary. Uh, he got it at the back exactly the same time, and I, they celebrated uh, just last year the 50th anniversary of the vaccine. And uh, you were saying earlier that uh, the, the wide-scale vaccination uh, didn't get to the rest of the world until long after it had been widely available in the U.S. It was a problem with production. And because the research was done in the United States, funded in the United States, we got it first. And when we had enough for it to be exported, the other countries got it, and some were more ambitious than others. Korea was one of the last countries to get it. It was a scourge. It was just so many people affected by polio. It began as infantile paralysis and that it was affecting children. And then it started moving up the age just chronologically to where it was affecting people in their 30s. And toward the end, uh, it was a disease that could affect anybody. Definitely a scourge. Um, how many people get polio, did get polio? The largest number was 58,000, and that was in 1952. In one year? In one year. Uh, there was uh, in New York City in uh, 1916, 6,000 died, and 27,000 were crippled by the disease, mm -hmm. and that's just in one place. So how many people in the U.S. now are survivors of polio? 1.63 million. million. How many people attend your group? We have uh, 700 on the roster. We have about 400 paid members. And uh, at a regular caring and sharing meeting, which is every other month, we draw about 35 to 40. A speaker meeting, we can draw over 100. Another thing we do, we have a resource list that uh, is put together by our members, recommendation of different doctors and therapists, orthotists and so forth, and we put those in uh, a brochure and send it out to all of our members every year. It's an annual thing. We would like to reach out to all medical professionals and teach them about polio because it's really not covered in medical school anymore. It's a dead disease to them. There's no new cases in the U.S., so they don't, there are a couple of paragraphs in the textbooks. You're not tested on it, so it's not really focused upon. So the numbers are something like only 20% of the medical professionals actually know anything about how to treat a post-polio. The doctors that treated us in the initial phase have retired. I was uh, lucky I have a number of friends who are ortho orthopedic surgeons, and um, actually they approached me. I would simply known them as individuals and didn't even know for sure that they were doctors, and one commented on how I was walking at the time and then others. And I have exactly that problem. These, these doctors are, are all semi-retired or completely retired, and uh, that is a challenge. So it sounds like your group is really doing a nice job of integrating the information and encouraging people to share that. Our mission statement, our goal is to raise awareness within the community, the medical professionals, the caregivers, and to reach out to other polios and to help them. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, do you have any, um, what, would, what would you do next? Just do more of this or you know, get some special people? Well, we're working on the next conference and a conference will bring the medical professionals in. Uh, they will learn and I, that's another one of our goals is to educate. So we pull from the East Coast, West Coast, we'll pull from Europe and we, we get the polio icons, the leaders, in the polio movement. Thank you so much, Stella. And thank you very much for joining us tonight on On The Move.